There's something so wild and exciting about encountering foxes in their natural habitat, but very often we only get fleeting glimpses into what foxes are up to. So one of the keys to making the most of these moments is having a basic understanding of fox behavior and being able to look at a fox and assess its body language in order to better know what is that fox doing, where is it going, and why. So in this video, we're gonna look at some basics of fox behavior and cover everything from how foxes move to hunting strategies and even some signs we can look for in their prey behavior like pheasants that lets you know when foxes are in the area and increases your chances of being able to see them. So one of the most basic aspects of fox behavior that we can look at simply comes down to how they move through the landscape. When foxes move, they have three basic patterns of locomotion that can be observed just by looking at their body. And each of these patterns can really tell us a lot about the intentions of that fox and provide a solid context for interpreting their behavior. So what I'm talking about is being able to see just by looking at a fox's body when they're moving in a trot, versus when they're moving in a walk, versus when they're moving faster, like in a lope or a gallop. And if you can simply see these three movement patterns, this will completely change the way that you look at foxes, and really all animals with four legs. So trotting is the most basic movement pattern that foxes prefer to use whenever they have the opportunity. This is the most efficient way for the body of a fox to move. And it's this bouncing movement pattern where the hind foot on one side of the body moves at the same time as the front foot on the opposite side of the body. And then they alternate back and forth in this rhythmic kind of scissoring motion that if we were to represent it musically, it would sound like tap, 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 tap. If you're ever watching a fox and they're just moving along at a steady pace, maybe hunting in open grassland and covering distance, this is the pattern of movement that they'll be most often using. When, however, the fox detects something, like movement in the grass or a particular scent, you may notice them slowing down to investigate in a walking pattern. And you'll see the fox's body will become much less bouncy and they will maintain contact with the ground as each foot moves individually. On the other side of things, when foxes are either running away from you or some sort of threat, or chasing after something that they've startled out in front of them, foxes will go into another movement pattern where they launch themselves off with their front feet and go completely airborne for a short period of time before landing on their hinds and launching themselves forward again. And this can be at varying degrees of intensity with lopes and gallops, but I'm just sort of lumping them together for the purpose of simplicity. And this movement pattern has a much more distinct airborne phase than the other two types of movement. So if you wanna get really good at seeing these three basic patterns of movement, I highly recommend that you spend time watching domestic dogs off leash and notice how their feet move between these three different patterns of locomotion. It's the kind of thing that if you can look at a fox and see whether it's moving in a trot, a walk, or at a faster running pattern, that will give you so much information about what that fox is thinking, what it's doing, and just help you understand that moment so much more deeply. So some other things to be aware of, foxes are canines. They're in the same family as dogs and coyotes and wolves, which is why they have very similar movement patterns to those three animals. And their dominant sense is scent, but they also have a very strong sense of hearing and use their sense of sight quite a bit too. And all of this plays into their actual hunting strategy. So when you see a fox out in an open space and it's moving along in that bouncy trotting pattern, they're using this movement in combination with their dominant senses in order to hunt in a patrolling strategy. And there's a few different scenarios that can play out. Sometimes what happens is the animals out in front of this trotting fox patrol will try to run away and you may see the fox switch into a faster gallop as they chase after. Or, what tends to be more common in the case of voles, which is one of the fox's most common prey animals, rather than running away, their prey will simply freeze or be completely unaware that the fox is even there. And in this case, the fox will slow to a walking speed. They'll move in, stop, look and listen for a few moments before they pounce. 
So just as you can observationally see the movement pattern that foxes are moving in, you can also assess visually how is that fox using their senses. You can see through their body language when their nose is particularly activated, when their eyes are particularly activated, or when they're using their ears. And all of these things, just being able to observe simple behavioral cues will really help you extract meaning from that situation and understand what that fox is trying to do. So the overall thing to keep in mind with foxes is that there are two phases to their daily cycle. There's an active phase where they're out hunting, they're moving in this trotting pattern, and they're patrolling around making waves of prey animals out in front of them that they then try to catch. Or they're in a passive phase where they're just resting and typically also gathering information at the same time. And in many cases, you can even see foxes resting right out in the open. Foxes are primarily nocturnal, so most of their activity happens at night, at dawn, at dusk. But you can also see hunting activity in the morning or evening. And often when they're hunting daylight hours, uh, foxes will alternate between periods of activity where they're hunting for a few minutes and then they might just lie down for 20 minutes to catch the sun. And if you have a nice pair of binoculars, you can get some really nice views of foxes sleeping in open landscapes during the daytime. The other thing that I wanted to mention here is because foxes are predators, they will actually cause a ripple effect of animals running away from them. And in many cases, making vocal alarm calls that can alert you to the presence of foxes. And so the thing that actually first alerted me to the presence of this fox were some pheasants that were making a series of bursting alarm calls and also making these repetitive staccato sounds off in the distance. When I looked over to see what the pheasants were all getting up set about, that's when I noticed the fox moving through. So I wasn't able to get the pheasant alarms on video, but I really want to do that and make a video about pheasant language at some point. So stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe if you want to keep learning about this topic. But for now, I just want to throw it out there that other animals, birds especially, will make alarm calls when foxes are moving through. Sometimes these are vocal alarms that can be heard from very long distances, like in the case of pheasants. And other times, when foxes move into thickety areas, I notice a lot of smaller birds like sparrows often have alarm behavior that just involves popping up in the thicket and making some flagging body language with their tail, but not actually making any noise. And being able to look at a fox and see with basic observation skills the combination of what movement pattern they're using and how they're activating their senses in the moment, this will all go such a long way towards giving you a much deeper appreciation for some of the more subtle aspects of fox behavior that can be seen quite plainly out in the open. So keep your eyes peeled out there in the fox world. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.